What's going on guys? Today we are going to build a login system using Node and MySQL. So let's just get in here a quick overview about this project that we're going to build together. So this is going to be the home page, for example, of our project. We got in here on the top three links. So we got one for the home page, which is this one. We got another one for a login and we got another one for a register of the page. So let's just register someone. So I'm going to put in here on the name. I'm going to put, for example, Max uh, Smith. Okay, Max Smith. I'm going to put the email is going to be Max at email.com. I'm going to put the password, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to press register. And now this person, Max, should be registered in our database. And as you guys can see on the top, now I have links for home, for profile, which is only available for people who are logged in. And we got in here the logout, if you want to log out the user, of course. So I'm going to show you, this is the database. We're going to use um, no uh, MySQL, of course. So I'm just going to refresh the page. Look, I got Max Smith. I got maxemail.com and I got the password that I just typed in completely encrypted, completely hashed, so everything is secure. So let me just show you. I got in here on the profile. I can see the name of this person, Max Smith. I can see the email and I just got some random things in here. So this would be a page that is only accessible for people who are uh, logged in. Okay, so if I do log out, okay. I'm logged out now. If I do, uh, if I go on the top on the URL to forward slash profile, okay, it takes me back to the login form. Okay, it does not let me go to the profile page unless I am uh, logged in. So I'm just going to log in again. I'm going to put max at email.com. The password that I put was one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to press login and now I'm back logged in. What am I using for logging in and logging out? I am just using some, let me go in here. I am using some cookies. Okay, so we are going to learn how to deal with cookies in here. All right, so I hope everyone is excited to, to get started with this project. So um, for using the MySQL database locally, I'm going to be using a software in here called ZAMP. Okay, so ZAMP. So this is what I'm going to be using, guys. Okay, I'm, I'm on Windows. If you guys are on Mac OS, if you are using a MacBook, I would advise you to use this uh, MAMP. Okay, because I don't know why when I'm using my MacBook, uh, I always have some trouble using ZAMP. So I use MAMP instead, this one. There is a free version, so you guys should be fine to use if you are on Mac OS. If you are on Windows, just use this one, ZAMP. Okay, so once you download this ZAMP, okay, and you install it, um, if you go into, let me just go in here, if you go into your C, Program Files, and then ZAMP, okay, just like I have in here on the window, C, Program Files, and then ZAMP, uh, once you go inside, if you scroll down, if you open this one that says ZAMPControl.exe, okay, this is executable, you should be able to see this small window, okay? I would like you to just press start on the Apache and on the MySQL. So you can just run your server locally for the MySQL. This is just going to be used for later on, but you can just start it now if you want to. Whenever you don't need to use your database, you can just come in here and stop it. Okay, uh, it's going to be very similar on MAMP. So let's get started with our project. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to create a new folder quickly. So I'm going to go in here. Okay. I'm going to create in here a new file. I'm going to call this one, um, note my SQL. Okay. Now I'm going to open that folder that I just created. So if I'm going to go in here, uh, node my SQL, I'm going to open this folder. Okay. Now I open this folder with my uh, Visual Studio Code. This is the um, code editor that I'm going to be using. 
So the first thing I want to do is um, I want to create a, a package.json file. So let's just open the terminal. When you open the terminal in here on Visual Studio Code, it should open the terminal uh, directly on your um, on your directory where is your folder that you just open. To make sure that you are on the correct place, guys, you can just do pwd, okay? And it should tell you, look, I'm inside of my D drive, inside of courses, and then I'm inside of uh, node MySQL. And if I'm gonna do ls, you know, there is nothing inside. This command ls is just to show you what kind of things do you have inside of this folder. So the first thing I want to do is do a npm init dash y. Okay. Uh, I forgot to say something, by the way, guys. In order for all of these to work, you need to make sure that you have Node.js installed on your computer. Okay. Let me just go back in here to the browser. If you don't have Node.js installed, look, just go on Google, Node.js. So it should be this link in here, nodejs.org. Just download Node.js, whether you are on Windows, Mac or whatever, you should be able to download and just like install it. Okay, so uh, let me just delete this. To make sure that you, you have Node.js installed, you can just do node-v. If you have something like this, v10 or uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have the same exact i think my node is a bit outdated now uh, uh, what was the newest one 12 or 14 so mine is completely fine for now so i don't need to care about this you just need to make sure that when you do node-v you have something installed okay now i can do npm init dash y okay and this now is going to create a file for me a package.json file where we're gonna keep track of all the things that we're gonna install in our project. Okay, so now I'm just gonna create um, a new file in here. So to create a new file, you can right click new file or you can go on the top into this new icon and click. And I'm gonna call this file app.js. So inside of this file, this is where I'm gonna put all the main things for our project. First of all, I'm going to install a couple of the dependencies that we need. Look, if you open your package.json, you don't have any dependencies yet, but I'm going to show you some things that you need to install. So you need to install npm i, which is short for npm install. Um, let me just see what do I need. So I'm going to need a couple of things. I'm going to need express. Okay. I'm going to need express to start our server. I'm going to need MySQL, okay, because we need to connect Node.js with MySQL. Um, and what else I need? I need something called a .env, okay? This is where I'm going to create all my uh, sensitive information like passwords and so on. So uh, we, we keep everything protected. Uh, I'm going to install HPS. This is going to be handlebars. So HPS is going to be our um, template for the HTML. Let me just install this for now. I think I'm missing something else. Oh, I, I think I'm missing. Um, yeah, I'm missing uh, two things. I'm going to do in here node mon. No, sorry. I'm, I'm going to do npm i dash dash save node mon. Okay. Node mon is just to make sure that uh, whenever we do some changes to our file app.js, um, we, we can just, the, the server is going to just restart automatically, okay? So, uh, if you install nodes, uh, node mon, okay? If you are on Mac, maybe you will have some errors trying to do this. You can just write like this, sudo before, sudo npm i dash dash save node mon. If you are on Windows, you don't need to put this sudo, okay? Only if you are on Mac, on a MacBook, okay? Right, um, I'm just going to install one more thing. Um, I think this should be fine for now. I'm going to install it after if we need to. So let's go in here to our app.js. So let me go to my app.js. There's going to be a couple of things that we need to uh, do in here. I'm going to start in here with a const express equals to require express, okay? 
So we need to import Express that we just installed to make sure that we can start our server from Node.js. Then after this, I'm going to do a const app equals to Express. Okay. This is just to make sure that you start a server. Okay. With this app. Now I'm going to do uh, something else in here. I'm going to do, for example, um, app. No, I actually need to uh, start my server. Let me let me just see. First, I'm just going to start with something in here simple to make sure that everything is just working fine. And then I will connect to the database. So app.get. Okay, I'm going to start in here with a request response. Okay, so what I created in here is whenever I go to my to my page on the browser, on the forward slash, it means it's just like the home page. I'm going to run this function with a request and a response. Basically, these two things that we have in here, a request is basically when you want to grab something from a form, for example, which we are not going to deal at the moment. Later on, I'm going to show you. And this res is like a short for a response is what you want to send into the front end. Okay. So I want to do in here a res dot send. Okay. I want to send something into the front end and I'm just going to send in here, for example, home page. Okay. So we created this route. Okay. This can be called a route because I can go to this forward slash on my browser and show something to the user. Okay. Now that I have this, I want to do something else which is going to be app dot listen. So you need to tell express which port do you want to listen in order to start your first project. So I want to listen on port 5000. You guys can choose any port 5002, 5003, 5001, 6000, 7000, 8000 is up to you. I think there's going to be a limit. I'm not sure which one is it, but I Anywhere between 3000 and uh, 9000, it should be all good. So after this, okay, this port, I'm just going to put in here a function. And this function in here, I'm just going to write console.log of um, server started on port 5000. This is just to make sure that this will run, okay? All right, so now that we got, this is just like the bare minimum to start your uh, Node.js project. I'm going to go inside of my package.json. In here, where you guys see these scripts, I want to add a new script. Okay, I'm going to add a new script in here. It's going to be called start. And so whenever I do npm start on my terminal, what do I want to run? I want to run this nodemon app.js okay make sure that you guys put this comma in here in the end of this test to make sure that you can add a new thing in here so whenever i'm going to run npm start in here on the terminal node.js actually is going to run this command nodemon app.js this is the dependency that we just installed before nodemon because i'm going to show you something guys Whenever you do some changes to your file app.js, for example, if you are not using Nodemon, you need to stop your server and restart it again in order to see the changes. But if you use Nodemon, if you do some changes in here and you save it, you don't need to stop the server and restart it again. Okay, so this is one of the great advantages of using this Nodemon. So I'm going to do npm start. If I do npm start, actually Node.js in the back end is just doing nodemon app.js running this file. Okay. npm start. And if everything is fine, uh, looks like we have an error. So it's saying uh, already in use. I think it's because ah, it was my other project. So I'm just going to put in here, for example, 5001. Okay. I think it's because my, my other project, look, now is all good. My server started on port 5001. All right, so if I'm going to go in here onto the top, I'm going to put localhost. Okay, make sure that you guys do this as well. Okay, localhost colon 5001. Now you can see home page. Okay, 
So if you got all of these correct so far, it means that all your project is working fine. And, uh, and that's it. Basically, we just start our server. Everything is working. We got our express. We got a message when you go to the, to the front page. And we put in here what kind of port we want to listen to. And we installed a couple of our dependencies. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, I'm actually going to show you how you can connect with the database. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video.